A while back, Chris Berry did a video where he attempted to explain Coriolis Force as a uh, simple optical trick using nothing more than a Nerf gun, a bicycle wheel, and a cell phone camera. And that resulted in the obvious disaster. After I did a video showing Chris what a mess that was, he's decided to come back and double down on his experiment. And you're just not going to believe this until you see it. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts. Push the... No, don't push... That. Tell you what, put your monitors in some other room because this dumpster fire is already raging. Before we listen to this video, let's do a little frame of reference 101, shall we? In physics, a frame of reference or reference frame consists of an abstract coordinate system and a set of physical reference points that uniquely fix, that is, locate and orient the coordinate system and standardized measurements within that frame. What you see here is a frame of reference. It has a center point and it has three points that give us unit vectors in the X, Y, and Z directions. That is all there is to a frame of reference. And things don't leave one frame of reference and go into some other frame of reference. Everything is in every frame of reference all the time. In fact, around that single point, we could have an infinite number of frames of reference. What happens if we turn it like that? The center point didn't move, but we moved the axes, rotated them in a different orientation. This is now a different frame of reference from the one we looked at previously. So keep that in mind as you watch Chris make a complete mess of this. Let's take a look at what Coriolis effect is. I've already Googled the Coriolis effect. In physics, the Coriolis force is an inertial or fictitious force that acts on objects that are in motion within a frame of reference that rotates, so that's one frame of reference, with respect to an inertial frame, that's a second frame. So we know we need a reference frame that rotates, aka non-inertial reference frame, and an inertial frame. So right off the bat, Chris demonstrates that he has no idea what a frame of reference is or why an inertial frame of reference is even mentioned. That's because he gets his information from Nathan No Balls Oakley and Questionable Education. Chris doesn't realize that the information coming from those two guys is about as useful as a pile of bird shit on a doorknob. So let's look at the definitions of what those are. Let's start with inertial frame. An inertial frame of reference in classical physics and special relativity possesses the property that in this frame of reference, a body with a zero net force acting upon it does not accelerate. That is, such a body is at rest or moving at a constant velocity. Okay, so Blue Marble Science criticized my first video saying that there was deceleration on the, um, uh, the Nerf gun. Okay, fine. No, Chris. What I was criticizing is the fact that you fired a projectile in a gravitational field and you did it parallel to the axis of rotation of your non-inertial reference frame. In which case, by definition, there is no Coriolis force. All you see is the ballistic trajectory of a projectile. That's what I was criticizing. So, what else can we do to, to test this? Uh, either moving at constant velocity or at rest. Okay, so we can test this on a body at rest as the inertial re reference frame, non-inertial reference frame, frame of reference that is, an, uh, that is undergoing acceleration with respect to an inertial frame. Okay, so we know that something that's spinning uh, like a roundabout or the earth or a, a tire is experiencing um, angular acceleration. Okay, so that is the non-inertial reference frame. So let's take a look at a couple videos I did earlier left to right attempt. So I'm going to pause this. So same setup, except this time what happens is I put this blue piece of uh, tape 
this tape uh, roll on my fence and it's sitting still, so it's at rest, right? So in other words, all the forces on it are, are equal. It's not moving in any direction, it's not accelerating, it's, it's, a, it's at rest. And we just read that the initial frame can be at rest. So let's, let's see what happens. Well, look, we get the same, wow, look, we get the same pattern that I got on my first series of videos that Blue Marble said was not Coriolis effect. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, Chris. You have outdone yourself with stupid this time, son. Coriolis Force 101. In physics, the Coriolis Force is an inertial fictitious force that acts on objects that are in motion within a frame of reference that rotates. Again, in motion within a frame of reference that rotates, Chris. Waving your cell phone around at a tree stump does not induce Coriolis effect in the tree stump. Jesus. This example which demonstrates the same thing, by the way, absolutely, absolutely is uh, an example of Coriolis effect. We, we, we're doing everything we need to do to reproduce Coriolis effect. We have, and let me back it up. We have an inertial frame, which is the, the tape on, on the fence at rest. And we have the non-inertial frame, which is the spinning tire. That's it. You have two point, points of view, right? If you were looking at the if the tape were looking at the tire, the, t the tape is going to know that the tire is spinning. The camera, um, but when you look at it from this view, you're not really sure if the, the tape is moving in this arc pattern or is it the tire. Now, obviously, we know because it's it's a simple setup. Alan! 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 Al! Alan! 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 Steve! 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 Um, but that's sort of the point of it. Um, and then just to confirm uh, the other direction again, I did that too, so let's take a look. So again, we see the um, the arc to the arc pattern. So, you know, Blue Marble's wrong. He doesn't understand what, what reference frames are. He doesn't understand Coriolis effect. That's it. It's simple. Once again, so I have to go out. He, he makes a hit piece on me. He doesn't demonstrate how I got wrong. He just adds some stupid cheesy graphics and um, claims that I got it wrong, but doesn't actually do any tests um, or experiments himself. So it's real sad that he has to resort to that. Um, but when you go out and do it yourself, you realize, yeah, that that's that's what's going to ha going to happen with two different frames of reference. One sit standing still at rest, inertial. One spinning, non-inertial. You get um, you get the curve pattern. Um, it's an apparent. Basically, it's it's the apparent deflection that you get here. So, look, it's common sense. Unfortunately, a lot of people in this realm, or in this debate rather, um, they just don't have much common sense. So, well, you got one thing right. You're not using one ounce of common sense when it comes to this. Again, the Coriolis force is an inertial fictitious force that acts on objects that are in motion within a frame of reference that rotates. Nothing happens in the inertial reference frame. You are intent that you're going to somehow or the other shoehorn that into the discussion. But there are no fictitious forces arising in an inertial frame of reference. It's just that simple. So let's take a look at the rest of the article concerning Coriolis Force. You really ought to read all of this and not just the first sentence. So let's focus on this very superficially. This describes all of the fictitious forces that arise in a rotating frame of reference. The one you're most familiar with would be centrifugal force. That's the one you can experience when you go around a sharp curve in the car and you feel like something is pushing you to the outside of the turn. Nothing is actually pushing you. That is the fictitious centrifugal force. Euler force is another fictitious force that arises in a rotating frame of reference. That's the force that makes you feel like you're being pushed backward on a merry-go-round 
when the merry-go-round starts up. It depends on the rate of change of angular velocity. What we want to look at is Coriolis force, and I'm going to focus on that highlighted section. Let me blow it up so we can read it a little better. Notice the Euler and centrifugal forces depend on the position vector r prime of the object, while the Coriolis force depends on the object's velocity, v prime, as measured in the rotating reference frame. As expected, for non-rotating inertial frame of reference, omega equals zero, the Coriolis force and all other fictitious forces disappear. The forces also disappear for zero mass. As the Coriolis force is proportional to a cross product of two vectors, it is perpendicular to both vectors, in this case, the object's velocity and the frame's rotation vector. It therefore follows that, the very first bullet, if the velocity is parallel to the rotation axis, the Coriolis force is zero. For example, on Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving north or south relative to the Earth's surface. This is exactly what was wrong with your Nerf ball demonstration, Chris. You fired a projectile exactly parallel to the rotation axis of the non-inertial frame of reference. There would be no Coriolis effect whatsoever in that case. Now, why is that? Vector cross products 101. The cross product of two vectors A and B is defined only in three dimensional space and is denoted by A cross B. The cross product A cross B is defined as a vector C that is perpendicular, orthogonal, there's that word you guys love, to both A and B with a direction given by the right hand rule and a magnitude equal to the area of the parallelogram that the vectors span. We can write that equation that way. A cross B equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between those two vectors times a unit vector N. That is simply the area of that parallelogram formed by A and B. What happens when we line A and B up with each other? Angle theta becomes zero. And if angle theta becomes zero, the sine of theta is zero, and that results in no Coriolis force. But let's look at something else while we're at it. Let's check out the last two bullets down here at the bottom. If the velocity is in the direction of rotation, the Coriolis force is outward from the axis. For example, on Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving east relative to the Earth's surface. It would move upward as seen by an observer on the surface. This effect it's also known as the Edvos effect, was discussed by Galileo in 1632. Now conversely, if the velocity is against the direction of rotation, the Coriolis force is inward to the axis. On Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving west, which would deflect downward as seen by an observer. This was demonstrated in the early 1900s. The weight of an object on a ship moving eastward would be less than the weight of the same object on the same ship if it was moving westward. You guys are constantly demanding proof of Coriolis. This guy did a video that gives you some proof of Coriolis. This guy set up this rifle and two targets. One target 1,000 yards to his west, a second target 1,000 yards to his east, and he fired three rounds at each of the targets. For the target to his west, the three rounds struck 
eight inches below the center of the target. For the target to his east, the rounds struck three inches high of the target, a total of about 11 inches. I'm going to leave a link to this video in the description. I suggest you watch it. This is an excellent demonstration of Coriolis. Hopefully, Chris will stop running around his backyard waving his cell phone and shooting Nerf balls at the fence. Hopefully, the other flat earthers will stop worrying about the infinite number of inertial reference frames that have no bearing whatsoever on the Coriolis force. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. But remember, Chris, when I say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge, it's a question. Hey guys, hit those little buttons down there. I would really appreciate it. Click the bell if you want notifications. And a special shout out to the Patreons. You guys are super. Thank you so, so much for everything you do. And with that, I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out of here. Ah.